in the skies, tornadoes touch down across central Illinois. A look back at the days after the storm. Plus, the power of protest. Central Illinois groups raise an alarm over nuclear power. And a chime in time, celebrating a local landmark's landmark anniversary. All that, and why would former WCIA newsman John Paul apply to witness an execution? Next, from the vault. The stories that made news and made history, the places that matter to us, and the people who make Central Illinois home. Join us from the vault. Welcome, I'm Matt Metcalf. Central Illinois has seen its fair share of bad weather. 1996 produced one of the worst outbreaks of tornadic activity that we've had in recent memory. A tornado nearly wiped out the town of Ogden. Judy Fraser and Elaine Kagas have this special after the storm report from the vault, 1996. And I cannot remember ever a worse night than last Friday night. So we're gonna try to take a look at where those storms hit. Now, the first major touchdowns were reported at Jacksonville and at New Berlin outside Springfield. Then we had Decatur got walloped for a second straight night. Then Pyatt County's turn with several tornadoes in the Mill Mine and Monticello areas. The storm's track then moved to southern Urbana, Eagle Ridge, and Ennis Ridge. And finally to the town of Ogden in eastern Champaign County, where the entire town was almost wiped out. And all along, of course, this path of destruction, the tornadoes changed the lives of hundreds of people in a matter of seconds. Channel 3's Elaine Kagas tells us how residents dealt with the tornadoes. Mother Nature first struck Friday night in Sangamon County near the community of New Berlin. Nearby in Macon County, Decatur residents were still in shock over another tornado that swept through 24 hours earlier. And in Ogden, the violent weather sent residents scrambling for cover. Well, I got my family into the bathtub in our bath, and within two seconds, uh, it hit. By the time it was over, parts of central Illinois looked like a war zone, with only piles of debris left where entire neighborhoods once stood. But amazingly, only one person died on Interstate 74 near Ogden. High winds there picked up a semi-trailer and threw the victim, a Missouri woman, out of the vehicle. Throughout the area, the fury of the storms was evident, with homes destroyed and lives turned upside down. Kathy Shewitt was in the basement of her Urbana home when the tornado hit. I kind of saw just from the um, basement door, you know, it was dark, and I saw how bad it was, and I just was thankful that my boys were fine, because we can rebuild. Nearby, some Ogden residents whose church was heavily damaged by the storms spent this past Sunday worshiping in neighboring St. Joseph. Like other tornado survivors, they're having a tough time coping. A heartbreak. It looks like a bomb hit it. We don't know whether we can rebuild or what we do. Recovering from the storms has also been difficult for Decatur resident George Blackwell. He says neighbors and the Red Cross have helped him carry on. To me, it's taken all you can muster to keep things under control for me and her and try to survive this thing. But we will survive it. Despite the overwhelming destruction, some things remain intact, like the strength and determination of the human spirit. Well, we'll come back from it. It's, you know, we're here to stay. We've been here for 126 years. We're going to be here a lot longer. And that's a sentiment being echoed by storm survivors throughout the region. As they look back on this disaster one week later. Lane Kagas, Channel 3 News. Since the tornado, Ogden has added two new storm sirens and a public storm shelter. But whether it's wind, rain, or fire, no one likes to see their local landmarks in danger. For our friends in Philo, their special place was known simply as the building with the dome. In March 1988, a massive fire threatened this important part of the town's past. Reporter Rebecca Hall covered the story. There were many sad looking faces in Philo today. The building that's been around as long as most of the residents was destroyed by a fire late last night. Fire officials say the blaze started in the old barber shop in the rear of the building. It went from a bank to a tavern. Then there was a doctor's office, barber shop, 
and now it's ended up pretty well just as a an apartment, but I don't, I don't believe too many people have actually lived in it in the last two or three years. Howard Mom says this building has been around for at least as long as he has, and that's 60 years. The building was erected about the turn of the century. The first business was a bank, but the bank closed during the Depression and never reopened. The one thing many remember about the building is its dome. I can always remember the dome, and it's always been, you know, kind of a little landmark for us. Uh, every time the uh, building has been redone, they've always managed to paint the dome and make it look nice. And it's, it's kind of a, you know, for a small town, you don't have many landmarks like that. But I'm afraid now it's going to it'll have to come down. The top floor of the building burned about four years ago. Then the owners were able to salvage the building. This time, they're not so sure. Rebecca Hall, Channel 3 News, Philo. Amazingly, that structure survived. It's now home to an international engineering company called Versabar. The company creates supports for heavy lifting operations at sea for equipment like oil rigs. Central Illinois worries about the nuclear option. That's later. And next, for whom does the bell toll? A local landmark's landmark anniversary.